Hi, I'm Alicia Corbett. I'm a fourth year PhD candidate and the instructor for Polls 313 Media and Canadian Politics. This course is really about the fundamental relationship between democracy and media. In this course, we take a really critical approach to answer the following questions. Whose stories get told? Who tells these stories? How are they told? And why are they told? Specifically, we're gonna be looking at uh, media framing of social movements, particularly the Black Lives Matter protests and different environmental protests. We're also going to be covering topics such as elections and media coverage of scandals. What I think is really unique about this course is that it allows students to put the theory that they're learning into practice. Each week we're going to be learning new concepts and ideas about the media and we're going to actually see how they manifest. So we're going to be looking at real news events each week and applying them to the key course concepts. I really hope to see a lot of you in the fall and I hope you enjoy the rest of your summer. Hi, my name is Rachel LaForest and I'm really excited to be teaching the Canadian welfare state in the fall. It's a really exciting time to be studying the welfare state. The pandemic has exposed a lot of stark inequalities in our society, be it around gender, around race, around um, family composition, around age. And so there's a lot to learn about how our social safety nets aren't protecting some of those really important members of our society. So in this course, we're going to do three things. We're going to look at what are the lessons that we learned from uh, the pandemic. And then we're going to look at how our welfare state has evolved and why is it that there are some groups that aren't protected through our main uh, uh, me measures of social protection. And then we're going to, in the last part of the class, look forward at what we can do about some of these stark inequalities. How can we rebuild our welfare state in a way that creates equal opportunity for all? The course is going to be delivered in a very flexible format. There's so many social policy areas to explore, like education, healthcare, immigration, labor market. I mean, it's uh, a lot of things that you can explore and you'll have an opportunity to delve into one of those areas that most interest you and uh, focus in on a policy er area. So I'm looking forward to seeing uh, some of you in the fall. Hi, I'm Fan Lu. I'm teaching Pulse 331 American Government this fall. Um, the main event, of course, this year is the U.S. presidential election. So we will allocate plenty of time to talk about events leading up to the election, the outcome of the election, and the American public's reaction to the outcome. We might even have a virtual election watch party. Okay, But this is not just a class about elections. So over the course of the 12 weeks, we will situate this era of American politics within the broader narrative of how American government came to be. Okay. So we'll spend a couple of weeks on the Constitution, um, a couple of weeks on policymaking in Congress, the judicial branch, the role of media in American politics and public opinion. In terms of format, I will upload pre-recorded lectures and hold virtual office hours. There will be a midterm, a final, an essay and two short quizzes. Okay, so I hope to see you there. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Ellen McDonald, and I'm teaching the Crit Critical Perspectives on Capitalism course this coming fall. That's Paul's 358. And what we do in that course is look at the different ways in which capitalism has been um, analyzed and understood in the world. Um, you're familiar, I'm sure, with the socialist critique of capitalism and maybe an anarchist critique. But we're also going to look at the environmentalist critique and the anti-racist and um, postmodern and feminist critiques. Um, we'll also look at subjects like surveillance capitalism. And um, the uh, course will move fairly quickly through a lot of different theoretical work. There's a fair bit of reading. Um, the plan in terms of online-ness of the course is that I'll be recording lectures and um, short ones and sending those out every week and also you'll be assigned to a discussion group that's going to meet with me for 45 minutes every week, a discussion group of probably about 15 people. And um, there's going to be a lot of reading, but some of the readings I'm going to replace with uh, 
podcasts or videos or things like that. So uh, I'm hoping you'll be interested in the course and I look forward to meeting you if you take it. Great. Bye. Hi there. I'm Professor Margaret Moore. I'm teaching Paul's 359 in the autumn 2020 term. It's called Issues in Political Theory. This course it analyzes important normative issues. It analyzes um, the idea of rights, including human rights, toleration, freedom and its limits, equality, um, intergenerational justice, including multi-generational historic injustice, justice towards future generations, justice in the family. So the idea here is that maybe political theory is best understood not by analyzing specific thinkers and analyzing how our political ideas have changed, so Plato, Aristotle, even contemporary figures like Martin Luther King, examining those and thinking and, and their entire thought. The thought here is maybe if you examine an issue and you look at its normative dimensions, the idea of rights or what's just or what's fair or what our ideas or responsibilities are, that that's actually a really nice way to learn political theory. And so we do this with a number of pretty important issues, first of all, concepts, but also theories, issues that will come up in lots of different courses. So I think it will be a really interesting course for you to take. Um, the, I've never taught remotely before, and I'm actually not very good at it, but my plan is to record a lecture on Zoom using screen share so you can see my PowerPoint, upload it each week at a regular time, possibly on the weekend, and and upload it in, uh, according to whatever the week it is, and also there will be a paired reading. and. Um, to divide the class into groups. The groups will be meet at one of two times and that will be an interactive component where you can ask questions or we can have a conversation each week about the, either the reading or the lecture. Hello, my name is Samantha Tweetmeyer and I will be teaching Pulse 366, the United Nations for my third time this fall. This course assesses the United Nations effectiveness across its three core objectives of peace and security, human rights and sustainable development through a critical lens. We will discuss how issues of power and representation have negatively impacted the UN's efforts, particularly emphasizing the tension between the Global North and the Global South, gender relations and the exclusion of women, and racial hierarchies and neocolonial injustices. Throughout these discussions, the course endeavors to offer a counter-narrative by uncovering and highlighting important roles by non-dominant states and individuals. These actors have shaped and reshaped the United Nations and its values over history. In centering the voices of women and minorities, the story of the United Nations is revealed as a decolonial struggle, and this potentially redefines the markers by which we adjudicate its successes and failures. The wider discussion of the United Nations is followed by a live action simulation. Students will get to see the pressures of power and representation in action through the major simulation, which comprises the three final weeks of the course. This year's simulation topic will be on the nexus of climate change and peace and security. As global pressures are increasing and the United States is more and more demonstrating it is no longer the leader the world needs, the pressure on the world's only truly global political forum to show leadership and guidance is stronger now than ever before. I look forward to discussing these challenges with you this fall. Hi gang, my name is uh, David Hagland. I teach Politics 367, which has a name, it's American Foreign Policy. And what we're going to try to do is figure out uh, that very same subject in a course of uh, 12 weeks reliant mainly on uh, my lecturing, which as you know, this time around is going to be done uh, through that wonderful mechanism of asynchronous instruction. Once I figure out what it will be, uh, most likely it'll be uh, the slides with voiceover lectures on them. As well, you will have two books to read, uh, interesting books, I hope, by Joseph Nye's Do Morals Matter, which talks about American presidents and Andrew Basevich is The Age of Illusions, which talks about um, American political culture. In the end, uh, you're going to have to write one review essay, of, uh, six pages uh, in length, and a final exam. Details about all of these matters will be forthcoming when you get the course outline and when you begin to absorb, absorb excuse me, uh, the lectures. Okay, bye-bye. My name is Christian Breed, and I'm the professor for Politics 384, Strategies for Political Research. 
As you can likely imagine, we've had to make some significant changes to how we deliver undergraduate education in our department. And so for Politics 384, well, it's no different. A class that normally has over 200 students enrolled required some fairly extensive revisions and overhaul to prepare it for the online environment. And we've done that. We've revised the course from end to end to now allow it to be delivered mostly asynchronously, meaning mostly on your own time and your own schedule, with a few synchronous engagements here and there. Namely, you're going to be working with your TAs, but every two weeks in a synchronous way or in a live way where you can work together in small group discussions with your TAs. So I'm really excited about this opportunity to deliver this course in a new way that I think you'll find actually just as engaging, if not even maybe more so, than what was in the classroom experience before. On top of that, we've had an opportunity to revise the content, focus it, and make it much more applicable uh, to the studies and, and research that you're going to be conducting as undergrads uh, going forward. The course broadly follows the, the plan of looking at the philosophies of science and the different approaches to the study of politics, and then starts to build your toolbox of different methods for both data collection and data analysis that I think you'll find really useful, whether it's in a paper that you have to write in your fourth year, or perhaps your undergraduate thesis as, politics, as part of Politics 590, or perhaps even on into graduate school. Indeed, I've had many students in the past who've gone on to graduate school come back and mention specifically that this course was incredibly valuable to them in retrospect. So perhaps it's a little bit like broccoli and that it might not be all that pleasant to taste, but it's important and it's good for you. On that note, with respect to textbooks, we've got two textbook op options for you to select, again, in the name of being uh, more inclusive and, and more uh, able to be consumed broadly. If you have a hard time finding the most up-to-date version of the textbook, that's okay. The second edition uh, will be just as useful as our, our uh, timetable uh, for the course has reading callouts for both the second edition and the new third edition, both of which we can use for this course. So hopefully you'll find that helpful as well. On top of that, all the readings that you need, including any new media sources like podcasts or videos, are all available through the OnQ page. And indeed, the OnQ page for this course will be your one-stop shop for all material you need. That's the one place you need to be. You don't have to spend any time looking for anything else. So I look forward to working with you over the coming weeks and months uh, for the fall term of 2020 as we go through and study uh, research strategies. Hi, everyone. My name is Stephen Laren, and I'm the instructor for Polls 388, Politics of Migration, which is uh, listed under the old title of Citizenship and Non-Citizenship in the course calendar. Uh, Polls 388 is a third year lecture course on the comparative politics of migration. And its purpose is to provide students with a broad but detailed introduction to the politics of migration on a global scale. The first half of the course deals with core issues such as the differences between migrants, asylum seekers, and refugees, why people move in the first place, migrant legal status and rights, migration and integration policy, and other political responses to migration. The second half of the course applies that conceptual and theoretical foundation to the world's major regions with weeks on the Americas, Europe, the Middle East and North Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, and the Asia Pacific region. The shift to remote teaching is a big change for everyone, but this course already had a take home exam last year. So the only major difference will be the way that the lectures are delivered. The course will be organized through OnQ, and every week I'll post a series of short lecture videos that cover the topics for that week, and you can watch them whenever it suits your schedule. Uh, most of these videos will be audio with slides rather than me speaking to the camera as I am now, and what I have in mind is something like an illustrated podcast, which I think should make it easier for you to focus on what I'm saying. I will also hold regular question and answer sessions on Zoom during scheduled class time, and we can meet individually either uh, over Zoom or over the phone if you want to discuss something in more detail. So that's a brief overview of my plans for Poll 388. Uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to hear from you. Uh, my email is stephen.laren at queensu.ca, and I look forward to September. Hey. Uh, my name is Olivier Jacques. I'm uh, the Skelton Clark Postdoctoral Fellow at Queen's University. Uh, and I'm going to teach Pulse 393 uh, Topics in Comparative Politics, the Politics of Inequality. So, this is basically a course uh, on uh, the political economy of inequality. It's going to try to explain how politics and economics can explain uh, rising inequality and what can we do about it. So, how can public policies and political institutions? explain uh, the differences between countries in terms of their level of inequality. Uh, so the course is going to cover multiple topics, such as uh, the economics of rising inequality, uh, 
for example, uh, why do we see labor market polarization? He's going to talk about uh, different welfare states and how they impact inequality to try to better understand the differences between countries. He's also going to discuss the main policy trade-off that policymakers face when they try to decrease inequality. So, for example, what happens if you try to, try to tax the rich to decrease inequality? And uh, finally, he's going to address why is it so politically difficult to decrease inequality? So what, what are the preferences of people regarding inequality? Uh, so uh, this will be recorded lectures um, that, um, and synchronous class discussions uh, that are going to take place this fall. Uh, there will be participation points given to participation in these synchronous discussions. And there will be two exams. One will be a take home and the other one will be a more classical exam that will be so supervised online. So I think that this course is particularly interesting. Uh, it's a political economy course and it's trying to explain uh, what is one of the defining challenge of our time, according to former President Barack Obama. And uh, so I think that with this course, you're going to be better able to understand why inequality is rising, what can we do about it and what are the constraints that policymakers face.